it's no secret that Ultimate Iron Man is the most challenging way to play RuneScape. Iron Man mode is already a pretty challenging way to play the game, but Ultimate Iron Man mode takes it to the whole next level. There are thousands and thousands of maxed Iron Man accounts, but when it comes to Ultimate Iron Man, not even a hundred people have maxed an account. And even still, some people choose to make this game mode even more challenging. For some reason, there's like a law or something that every Ultimate Iron Man account has to have some weird twist to it. And a while ago, I made my own Ultimate Iron Man with a twist of my own. In early 2021, I played a hardcore Iron Man that was locked to PvP Worlds, and it was one of the most fun accounts I've ever played on. I love PvP Worlds, so I thought, why not try to lock an Ultimate Iron Man into a PvP World? So I did, and I played for a couple hundred hours before I made what I called Episode Zero. But that was months ago. I never quit the account, I just started to play it on the side, but I decided to bring it back as my main account, and in the last couple months, I've been doing one thing. I've just been AFK bolting Slayer. To be able to do all the bossing that I want to do on this account, which will be the main focus, I need 87 Slayer. This is easily the longest grind I'll probably do on this account, so I decided to just chip away at it slowly. I did only Konar Slayer because I just wanted a ton of Brimstone Keys to be able to open for a bunch of supplies, and I got a ton of range levels, HP levels, money, supplies, and after months of work, I finally got 85 Slayer. After I decided I was going to frequently start playing this account again, I started stacking Brimstone Keys and I got up to 76 before I hit my goal of 85 Slayer. I know it's starting very in the middle of the account, but welcome to episode 1 of my Ultimate Iron Man Locked In PvP. There is the last key used. I think I got like a mill in just cash, which is awesome. I have so much stuff in my inventory. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna keep this stuff on the ground. Let's price check all of it before I drop it. 5.6 mil, let's get all of this in the looting bag. Anytime I need to go use the looting bag, I have a portal in my house that takes me to this graveyard. I don't remember what the teleport's called, but it's really convenient uh, and pretty safe. I don't think anyone really comes and checks this graveyard, especially not on a PVP world. So let's put all of this in the looting bag really quickly, and then I'll show you what I've gotten from 85 Slayer. I think I started at like 60, so it's a lot of stuff. Look at my looting bag. 6,000 gold ore, 6,000 steel bars. I have a bunch of magic seeds, dragon fruit seeds. Those are worth a lot, but uh, I don't really think I can do much with them. Food, for some random logs to burn the food. A bunch of crafting supplies, diamonds, rubies. I have a bunch of arrow tips and dragon darts that I'll probably just elk or just sell to a shop. I have a bunch of cash too. Uh, I'll probably elk these runite ores. These torso seeds and manta rays, unfortunately, I don't really have a use for. I won't use them for a long time. I think that is everything I want to put in my bag. So I'm going to go show you my cash stack. I've been storing all of my money in the Nightmare Zone coffer. I think in the future, I'm going to avoid storing stuff unless I need it for inventory space. So either I'll have all of my cash or none of my cash, if that makes sense. But I have 17 mil. That's actually insane. Now that I'm not going to be doing a lot of Slayer, I'm going to go store all of my stuff in the death storage at Hespori. I want to clear out a bunch of inventory space to use the supplies I have from Slayer. So in order to do that, I'm just going to die and leave a ton of stuff in the death coffer, the death storage here at Hespori. All right, we've died. We're now in Lumbridge and it's time to start the really, really annoying process of getting back to the farming guild to go get my stuff. I have to walk from Lumbridge all the way to this tree to get a Draman stick thing so I can make a Draman staff. I'm on the RCS spellbook so I can homeport and run north to Winter Todd. I come to Winter Todd so that I can come grab this knife and then run all the way south to the fairy ring. I can fairy ring right next to the farming guild. This takes like seven or eight minutes every time I want to die, so it's really annoying to do, so I don't want to do it very often. Look at all my stuff. I can unlock it for 25k, I guess. I thought it was going to be 100k. That's nice. And look at all my stuff, all the seeds that were in my seed box that I, I don't think I showed yet. But I have a lot of seeds from Slayer. So firstly, I'm going to take out all of my gear and put it on. All of my runes in my rune pouch because that's absolutely necessary to teleport around the game. 
and my cash because uh, you need cash to do basically everything. It's time to start using all of the supplies I got from Slayer. That's probably what most of this episode is going to be. First off on the list, I'm going to do all of my crafting and smithing supplies. So I'm going to take out all of the gold ore, steel bars, gems, and I'm going to use them all up. First things first, I got to get goldsmith gauntlets before I use up all of my gold ore. I also bought an amulet mold in the Alcarid crafting shop because I'm going to make ruby amulets first. This is where I'm going to spend the next, I have no idea how many hours this is going to take. Uh, I can smelt at this clay forge, it's really a furnace, and I can make gold bars, and then I can make ruby amulets. The reason I'm smelting here on Natiznot is because there is a general shop inside the bank, so I can sell these ruby amulets to this general shop and make a bit of money too. Okay, apparently you can't sell stuff to this general shop. Uh, this is the right guy, right? Natiznot supplies? Look, is it outside the bank? It says there's a general shop here, why can't I s I should be able to sell this at a general shop, I guess not. So I guess I'm going to go change locations. All right, we're here in Shiloh Village. Uh, there's a general shop close to here as well. I don't think I'll actually sell these now because it's a lot longer of a walk from the furnace and I'll probably burn a bunch of run energy and it'll be like twice as slow. So I don't think I will. So I guess I'm not going to make a bunch of extra money. All right, I've used all the rubies that I'm going to use. I'm saving 250 of them because you need 250 to get a dig site pendant in your house. I've just been dropping the ruby amulets here. I'll drop another nine. Uh, I'm going to start using the diamonds, but I need to go get a amulet or bracelet mold from my house because I can't make an amulet with my crafting level. 64 crafting and that means we're 1500 total on the account already. All right we've used all of the diamonds. I can drop these diamonds in this bracelet mold. It's time to start using all of the gold. I'm gonna grab another amulet mold. I mean I might as well just make these gold bars into gold amulets. They're 30 xp each and I have about 5,000 gold bars so that's like 150,000 free xp. And I want to squeeze every last bit of XP out of these gold ores that I can. So I think I'm going to take the extra like four or five hours it's going to take and just make them into gold amulets as I smith them. The smithing levels are really coming in now. 60 smithing already and I still have 4,000 to go. About 10 hours later, and there is the last gold bar used into all gold amulets. I have 68 crafting, 66 smithing. I got so much XP from this. It only took like 14-ish hours. It took like a day and a half to use all that stuff. I have 250 rubies left over that I'll probably get 69 crafting from. Uh, I can drop this amulet to destroy these goldsmith gauntlets. I'm going to go use these steel bars now, I think. I'm going to use this Varrock Western Anvil because it's the fastest one. I am in a free-to-play world, which is why I have a lobster and two swordfish. There's no way I can die in free-to-play, right? I have four food and it's like only a couple tiles to the bank. There's no way I can die, I'm pretty sure. We'll see if I even get attacked. Boom. As you can see in my inventory, I'm making a plate skirt. One last thing. I'm so close to 70 smithing. Look at these guys. <laughs> All of these guys have been standing around and picking up all the seal items that I've dropped and they've just been alking it. It's actually so cute. I've I probably made like a thousand plates. So between them they've made like a mill and just alking all of this stuff, which is decent I guess. I've only been here for like two hours. I didn't even get attacked. Uh, I don't know why I was... I was kind of worried, I'm not gonna lie. But there's all of these smithing and crafting supplies used. 69 smithing, we're gonna get 69 crafting as well. We can easily get both of those to 70 for like Song of the Elves and Dragon Slayer 2 and all of that stuff. But it's really nice to have almost 70 smithing out of the way. One nice thing about this account is there's the little dwarf guy in Lumbridge and stuff. I can just buy the Lunar Staff and I can buy Arty Cloaks and stuff off of him. Kind of something you don't really uh, see on Iron Man or anything because they don't go to PvP worlds. Next up on the list is the runes. I need some magic XP for what I'm going to do next. And I have a bunch of death and chaos runes. I'm probably going to sell these blood and soul runes to Ali Morrison for some cash later on, but uh, I'll leave them in there for now. There is the magic level I wanted. Uh, I've got a bunch of extra mind runes here because I have some other stuff to do in real life. I don't think I ever said it, but look at my combat stats. I'm 86 magic, 98 range, and I got 90 HP from AFK Bolting Slayer, which is so nice on a PvP account. I'm going to use up the rest of these runes, but that 86 magic level is very important because I'm about to go train construction. Before I talk about construction, the Golden Gnome nominations are live, and it would mean a lot to me if I was even just nominated for the new old school runescape video creator, Golden Gnome. 
I mostly have made a bunch of PvP world videos that I hope you've enjoyed about killing bots on PvP worlds, my PvP hardcore, random people I find on PvP worlds, and I made some dead man mode videos too. If you saw my biggest XP drop video and want to vote for that for the best video this year, that would be cool too. I'll leave a link to the survey down in the description. Even if you don't vote for me, I think you should still fill it out. Thanks. And back to the video. Training construction on my account is pretty tricky. Normally the fastest way to make planks is to send your servants to the sawmill with logs, but Ultimate Iron Man can't do that because they don't have a bank. Even though you could just send it to my inventory, just saying. This means I'll have to make the planks myself, and there are two places in the game where you can do that. The Woodcutting Guild, which for some reason is decently active on PvP worlds, so I want to avoid that. And the other place is the Sawmill, which also is somewhat active on PvP worlds, and I'm not really sure why. I've seen and fought PKers at the Sawmill enough times to make me not want to do this as well. There is one more way to make planks in the game, and that's why I got 86 magic in the last clip. There are a lot of useless and niche spells on the Lunar Spellbook, and one of them is called Plank Make. Each plank costs 2 astral runes and 1 nature rune per plank, so it's a pretty expensive spell, but it does reduce the cost of making the planks by a little bit. And fun fact, it makes the worst sound I've ever heard in RuneScape. This is your volume warning. Thank god you can mute game sounds. Outside a few different player owned house portals, there's an oak tree. So the plan is to just chop the oak tree, make the oak logs into planks, go into my own house portal, and train construction like that. All right, it's time to start training construction. Here is the rune axe, 40K. I spent like a mil on runes as well. Uh, I need to clear out some inventory space. I'm just gonna destroy this lunar staff. I can buy it back uh, in Lumbridge and it's time to go to our house portal. This is what I'm going to be doing for the next 50 plus hours. It's going to take a long time, but I really need 80 construction. This is what it's gonna look like. I can cut all these oak logs right next to this Rilekka house portal. You can see on my rune light that I'm gaining about 40,000 construction XP, which is not the best. And I'm going to need to gain almost 2 million XP, so easily over 50 hours because I don't think I'm going to be super efficient and get 40k the whole time. The first level of many. I found out that I can actually make planks while I'm woodcutting and it won't interrupt the woodcutting, so this might go a little bit faster. I was just cutting down the tree and then while the tree was respawning I would just make planks. But I can do it while I woodcut, which is nice. Another great thing about this construction method is that I get 90 XP every time I make a plank. There's 87 mage. I'm gonna cast plank make 30,000 times, so I'm gonna get 2.7 million XP. This guy just stood there for a while, so I thought it was AFK and I came to kill him, and then he asked how the construction grind was, so he clearly knew what I was up to. I think that guy might attack me on a different account or on that account, so I'm just gonna change house portals. Luckily, there's more than one house with an oak tree next to it, so I'm gonna go to Hosidius. Since there's only one oak tree, even if I don't get a full inventory of planks, I just go into the house anyway and build the larder. Sometimes I'll go in and I'll have enough inventory to build two, but I've only been building one most of the time, and I thought it would be way slower, but I'm getting like 50k an hour instead of 40, so somehow it's faster. 10 levels down and 20 more to go, there is 60 construction. I ran out of nature runes and astral runes, so I bought a ton more and I no longer have a green cash stack. I just spent like 12 mil on runes. This construction method is so much more expensive than the other methods, but it's really the only thing I can do safely. I don't even have enough money now to make the planks for 80 construction, so I have to go make more money real quick. I still have a bunch of blood runes and soul runes. I hope that this is gonna be enough. I'm not 100% sure that it will. So if it's not, I'll have to go make more money, but this should be enough to get me very close. I have these uh, dragon stuff too, but this dragon stuff will sell for a little bit, but the soul runes and stuff will sell for a couple mil. If you didn't know, blood runes sell for 200 each to Alan Morrison, you don't even have to hop worlds. Uh, and the soul runes sell for, I think, 150. So, oh my cash deck, oh my God. Well, we're actually, we actually ended up with 4.5 mil. I think, hopefully that's enough. 
While I was at the death storage place, I also got my irit leaves out because next to the Hosidia's house portal, there is a herb patch. So every hour or so I can come to this herb patch and just do one seed. I'll probably won't do more. Another thing that's really great is that I have the fertilized soil spell. So I don't even have to use super compost. It's great. So I'll do that hopefully every time it's up, but I'll probably end up forgetting. Anyways, it is back to construction for like 50 plus hours. There is 70 construction. I only have 10 more levels to go. I have 20,000, 21,000 more planks to use. This is so much. It's been like two days and I've got, I'm only at 70. What the fuck? He <laughs> DDS'd me, what? What the hell? Holy shit, look at this guy's account. 2155 total, he's a max Zerker account. Oh my God, this guy's a beast. I wonder what he can hit with the DDS. Very big level coming up here. Next one. There it is, 90 magic. I think I'm gonna get 92, I calculated it. These magic levels actually are so nice and is the only reason I'm still doing this. I would've stopped at like 70 something probably. Uh, but I need magic levels as well. We are just over the halfway mark. You can see my inventory, I have 14,000 runes left. So it's probably another like 25-ish hours, maybe 30. Uh, just over halfway. That is where I'm going to end the video. I'm going to start next video by getting 80 construction and start to fill out my house. Uh, it's much needed. It would mean a lot if you subscribed and I will see you next time.